So one of the sites that we've been trying to install a living shoreline is a location called Money Island. It's also near a community called Gandy's Beach. And between those two small communities is a large expanse of marsh. Money Island is situated right in the middle of the Delaware Bay uh, oyster beds, uh, which is a primary area for crabbing and fishing for flounder or fluke, um, for weak fish. Uh, and so a lot of boats come in and land their catch there. It's not a large community, but it's called Money Island because the boats are landing their catch and they're making their money there. There's a single road that comes out to that across this small spit of marsh on Upland. Um, we picked this area because it's key to the fishing community, all these different fisheries that are out there. And if we lose the road going out to that, then this fishery will have to find another port, uh, which will increase the cost to steam out there, increase the cost to build new facilities, a new place to land, all that sort of stuff will be lost. Um, and we wanna try and protect that uh, for this industry uh, because we're not sure that it's economical for them to land these, these fish anywhere else. There's a few uh, Living Shorelines projects in South Jersey right now um, with several different partner organizations, but this specific project out on uh, Gandy's Beach, Money Island area, um, is to help stabilize that shoreline and, and the road. And then also along the bayfront, the Gandy's Beach bayfront there, that's a Nature Conservancy property, and there's been um, extreme erosion going on there for the last 50 plus years. So the Conservancy is working with us and um, partner organizations to help build that up a little bit so it's better equipped to handle um, storms, extreme weather, and also just sea level rise in general to keep, try and help it keep pace. So there's lots of different types of materials you can use to make a living shoreline all the way from like a reef ball type of structure um, shell bags, which are built by our local school kids here for our Delaware Bay projects. So it's recycled clam and oyster shell put into these stretchy mesh bags that are then deployed in different configurations to give some height for that wave breaking ability. Uh, and then also behind that is the coconut or core fiber, like a husk, coconut husk, stuffed into a tube wrapped in coconut netting. And there are long tubes that you can like scallop along the shoreline. And so the sediment will fill in behind that, the grass grows, and then you can even make layers behind that or tiers of the logs. And now on front of that, we're building what's called oyster castles. So they're, they're a uh, offshore breakwater, uh, if you will. Um, so they're made out of cinder block. That's a special mix that includes some oyster shell in it to attract oysters and other organisms to attach to it to create a small reef, if you will, a living reef, as opposed to just a rock wall. That reef will then be inhabited by uh, fish and clams and crabs and other organisms, uh, uh, and be just like you would think of any other kind of a reef, a living, a living entity.